Good afternoon, everybody, here in the conference room and also remote at your home or at your office, who knows. I was invited by Olena uh, to give you our Hungarian uh, use case of uh, DigiFactor. Besides uh, presenting you uh, the DigiFactor use case, I would like to demystify some misbeliefs. What are those? First of all, I think all of you agree that if, you go, uh, if all of us go to uh, a, co a company and start to speak about factoring, the first reaction will be too complicated, too document heavy, goes with a lot of hassle. The second thing I think on the factoring market is that usually we are competing with a normal working capital loan. Why we are competing with that? Because it's much easier from customer point of view. They don't need to submit any documentation. They only disburse the loan when they want to uh, or when they uh, need to. The third thing, and I think also very important, that on a corporate environmental Having a new innovation, a new digitalization, it always takes years, many, many years until we can uh, bring a new solution uh, into operation. However, after uh, my presentation, I really, really hope uh, that all these misbeliefs uh, will no longer excuse for the customers. So my plan is for today to have all these myths uh, busted. But also uh, next, or beside uh, this busting uh, these myths, I also give you like uh, business-wise the example why the digitalization is also very important uh, for factoring. My name is Boglar Kovanderscheid. Uh, I'm heading a working capital solution directorate at KNH Bank, uh, which means I'm also responsible for trade finance factoring uh, uh, product factories. But today I'm going to speak about uh, receivable financing uh, only. Uh, my presentation uh, will consist of two and a half parts. One is uh, about uh, the DigiFactor itself, which is uh, the first phase of uh, our development. The second part will be uh, much broader because it's uh, something like uh, Katalin also mentioned, it's uh, quite more uh, country-specific one for Hungary. The second one uh, will be for a much broader interest, uh, I think an interest for all of you. This is a documentary story, uh, e-invoicing, and the uh, half part, the last part will be a personal story of mine, how uh, within the bank we went through all this, this digitalization part. Uh, here comes the name, the abbreviation of NAV. This is the Hungarian Tax Authority. Uh, as Katalin mentioned, we are in a quite restrictive regulatory environment, which means that all the taxpayers in Hungary uh, has to upload their invoices to the Hungarian Tax Authority. This was the trigger of our development. As uh, us, as a, a factoring company, we also issuing uh, invoices uh, against our services, uh, some of our services to our customers, and we only need, uh, we also need to upload our invoices. But the trigger was that once we are uploading the invoices, why not uh, to reverse the traffic and download those, those invoices and make it available to our customers? So the solution is quite easy. We are downloading the invoices, and uh, these are available to our customers. They can only click, click, click which invoices they want to submit to the bank, and we receive it out, uh, immediately, and we can finance it uh, within 24 hours. But beside uh, the easy solution, I would like to give you some background also. Uh, from 10, 2021, yes, I already mentioned that all the taxpayers uh, need to upload uh, the invoices. During when we started uh, to decide to go uh, with this uh, uh, innovation or with, it, with this digitalization, we had many dilemmas because it is not only to uploading the invoices, but all the taxpayers who are uploading those uh, having an XML file, which is like an identity card for a company. This is an XML key. What if we as a bank do not receive the consent of the company uh, using this kind of an XML key? How we can con convince our customers to give the consent or uh, do we... Uh, 
can can we do that? Uh, does it allow by GDPR point of view, by compliance point of view, to, to use the identification key of the customers? So we had many, many discussion about that, but finally we, we found a solution which uh, went through all the departments, all the compliance legal point of view. It's uh, it's uh, um, acceptable to, to all the parties. Also some words about the timing, because as I mentioned, it takes many, many years uh, for us from the first uh, discussions until we went into production, took one and a half years. It's too long, too fast, you can decide, but with, in a bank, uh, we, be, we believe it's uh, quite short. And it was also a question mark whether go to the market first as a bank, because we had others, but not on the um, banking competitors, or being a fast follower. We wanted to be the first bank on the Hungarian market uh, to come out with this solution. And finally, we did it. And also the vendor who helped us uh, uh, to make uh, this solution uh, go into production gave us exclusivity. So until this year, until the end of this year, we will be the only bank who can give this uh, kind of uh, easy to use solution to our customers. And yes, it is very efficient. Why? Also from customer point of view, uh, it's, it's a click-click solution. So they no longer need to send any Excel sheets, any invoices, uh, or any other documentation to us for factoring. And also efficient uh, from back office point of view. We could significantly decrease the time uh, what uh, our colleagues are spending uh, with the invoice uh, buying with the, with the manual workload at the back office. And here's some, something about the result. Yes, it is innovative in the sense that all the customers receive by 5 a.m. So every morning by 5 a.m. they receive the invoices, what they can uh, send to us uh, for factoring. But not all the invoices, because uh, the customers are uploading all the invoices, but on the front-end face uh, of our online system, uh, our customers only receive those invoices which are able to be financed, and they can decide near the uh, first coffee in the morning which invoices to finance. And we also have another so solution beside this kind of a click-click solution. I would say this is a pro solution. This is the automated financing because the customer can decide that up to the uh, limit of their factoring facility, they wanted to submit us each and every day all the invoices which are able to be financed. So no, no longer need to uh, log into the system, no, no longer ne uh, need to click, 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 only give us the instruction for automated financing and we are doing this uh, quite automatically. And it is also important in the sense that this kind of a process is a straight through process without any human intervention. So with the automated financing, we are also saving even further time uh, for our back office. It's user friendly. Uh, I can recall a, a client meeting uh, when after production, when we went to a large company and he told us, no guys, I don't believe you, it, it does not exist. I, 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 no, it, it, uh, with factoring, it's, it's with a lot, lot of documentation. We set up the whole system and next morning at nine o'clock we received a call. Wow, guys, you did it. Uh, congratulate because this is what I really wanted to. So this is uh, how our uh, customers accepted it. And I only want to speak about the last uh, thing because uh, we have already had a discussion uh, previously about fraud, but we believe that if a customer uploads an invoice uh, to the Hungarian tax authority and we are downloading the data from that, it is no longer uh, a fraud transaction. So we no longer ask any invoices from our customers for random check or, or, or just check it whether it's valid or not. So so we, I, I think or we believe uh, that uh, we can um, eliminate the risk uh, of fraud. This was the first part uh, uh, of uh, the, my presentation, the DigiFactor. And after we went for production, uh, we asked the, uh, the opinion of our customers. We made a deep interview, how they see uh, the new uh, improvement, the new development, but not only the DigiFactor, but also we ask their opinion about factoring, how they see our processes, what they would like to see as a next phase. And we received uh, quite valuable uh, feedbacks from them. 
uh, we evaluated them. And I only wanted to highlight two of them because they referred uh, to the direction we went forward. The, uh, the one, uh, one was that they no longer want to receive any documentation either by email nor by um, envelope by a normal post. And the second one that, that they want to use uh, factoring as online as they can. So we decided that under the umbrella of the, of the DigiFactor project, uh, uh, we start a second phase. Uh, what we call a documentary store. Um, this serves as a library, uh, a storage for our customers, where, where they can upload their documentation concerning all the factoring processes. Which documentation we are speaking about? Uh, these are invoicing, these are notifications, certificates, uh, all kinds of documents that we earlier uh, sent it uh, by email or by, by the uh, envelope. 24 months we are uh, storing this documentation so the customer can decide when they want to uh, um, download those uh, documentation and, and at the time when they have time for doing that and when they have mood for that. So no longer uh, depends uh, on, the, on the emails and sorting the emails and so on and so forth. And uh, we also could, with this solution, decrease uh, the workload at back office because uh, uh, my colleagues no longer need to um, print out the, the invoicing, no longer needs to put it in the envelope. Also from the customer side, they no, no need to, to open the envelope and sort it somewhere else. We also created the invoicing. Uh, the customer can uh, download the invoice from this documentary store. And <laughs> To be honest, uh, there was also a, a hard internal uh, pressure to us because we are no longer allowed to send any uh, banking and business secret uh, documents and uh, bio attachment in an email form because it's no longer a, a safe channel. Because of phishing, because of uh, fraud transactions, we have faced unfortunately more and more also in the corporate environment. So we had to find a solution how we can uh, uh, make it easier and uh, make it more safer also to our customer and also to ourselves. So uh, we could also uh, did this internal recommendation uh, complete, it, complete. This was the second story. I think this is not a, a, a country specific one, but I hope may uh, inspire you. And after that, as I promised you, I will give you a personal story. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with this chart. Uh, in my 20 years of banking background, I faced the chart uh, many years. I can remember one example is the blockchain story. But I really believe that uh, when we have a new innovation, a new dig digitalization, the movement is always the same. Uh, we went for production from Thursday to Friday, and uh, I had a bilateral meeting with my boss, uh, who is a board member, on next Monday. He congratulated, did it very well, one and a half year. It's, it's a little bit too long, but from his point of view, but does it mean that from tomorrow all your customers will, uh, will use the DigiFactor solution? No, this is not the reality. Uh, I would say that currently we are uh, in the throw of disillusionment and slope of enlightenment. The penetration is not more than 35-40% uh, after nine months, not more. Uh, we re uh, really uh, hope that we can improve it and we believe that we will improve uh, the penetration, but I would say that uh, the productivity won't reach 100% in the midterm. So that was my presentation about the DigiFactor story. It's very well resonated what uh, Kati uh, started about uh, the, how we can accelerate the, uh, the um, financing, receivable financing with the digitalization. Uh, I really hope it inspired you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can raise it during the panel discussion. Thank you very much.